This past week, Lisa told me that today they were inviting people to wear their favorite t-shirt from a mission trip, vacation Bible school, whatever the case may be. And so I'm pulling these out. Now I have 22 years of t-shirts. And so I'm looking at these t-shirts and going, a favorite, because you know, it's like a picture for me. Every one of those t-shirts holds memories from that particular trip. And so as I'm sorting through them, I'm like, I cannot decide which would be a favorite. So then I thought, well, then I'll just make changes along the way. But then I realized if I did that, I'd have to change about every five minutes. So I got every shirt in for the day until I found this one. Now this one is not a t-shirt that was worn on a mission trip or a youth gathering or vacation Bible school, but this is a shirt that really I wear to claim my identity because I believe, fully believe, that I am a child of God. And it carries along with it so many different things. In fact, uh, Paul is talking about that in Romans today. It says, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. It made me think of an assignment that I had at one point. And that assignment was to write my own obituary. That is a really hard thing to do. Because I started out and I wanted to say, okay, I'm the daughter of, and I've got the, this brother, this sister, I've got nieces and nephews. You know, pretty soon you wanna name everybody and everything that you've done in your life. And then I started thinking, but what is an obituary all about? What is the legacy that I wanna leave? What's the last word that I wanna share with people? And then I came up with this, Bonnie Gerber, beloved child of God, because that's what I wanna claim. More than anything else in this world, I wanna claim that I am a child of God. And I wanna claim that because it reminds me that I have done nothing in this world without God. For all who are, did you hear it? For all who are led by the Spirit of God. You see, the Spirit of God moves us to be and do what we cannot be and do on our own. Because left on our own, we truly are selfish people. We truly are selfish people. Now you may say, oh, well, I, no, I think we'll do good. We will. Don't get me wrong. But at the heart of it, when we have choices to make, sometimes those choices are difficult because we want to make them to benefit us, our family, our friends, rather than looking at how does it benefit all of humankind. And so being led by the Spirit of God was taking a look at this and saying, how, what does it mean to be a child of God? What, what, what significance does that have at all? And then it says, and then Paul says here too, when we cry, Abba, Father, when we cry, Abba, Father, that is an endearment. Jesus would cry out, Abba, Father. It, it reflects a closeness. It reflects a deep relationship with another person. When the Kennedys were in the White House, <clears throat> it, it, uh, there are pictures of this. He wanted to, John Kennedy wanted to be so close, he wanted his children to always be able to have access to him. He didn't want them to be shut out as if there were something different. So there are pictures of his children in the Oval Office and they are dancing and they are hiding under the desk and they are trick or treating. They didn't know where they were. They had no idea that this was a, such an important place. But what they did know was that their father was there. And that when their father was there and he invited them in, it was the place for them to be. 
But see, that's what happens when we cry, Abba, Father. We are invited in. We are given an entry into all, of that, all that God is because God wants us there, close. God doesn't want to be some God that's up there somewhere. God wants to be a God that's right here, close, accessible. And that's what it means to cry, Abba, Father. To be a child of God means that we are heirs of God and, uh, and co-heirs with Christ. Now, we know that when we talk about heirs, usually it means that there's some kind of uh, money or some kind of precious item that's, that's coming our way. If we know that we are in somebody's will and we're planning on this big stuff and, and all things are good. But when we talk about being heirs of God, it is totally different. Being an heir of God, it has nothing to do with finances, nothing to do with wealth, nothing to do with power. Being an heir of God means that we will have and already do have access to the resurrection. We, and scripture says that, we will be resurrected it, with the same resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's what it means to be an heir of God, is that we get the same as Jesus got. We will be raised again. To be an heir of God means that we get love and mercy and grace and forgiveness. And we don't have to wait. We get it right as children of God, we receive more than we could ever imagine. As children of God, we are also transformed. I love this part that John talks about right now. John talks about, the third thing about it is that it says, uh, for the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the revealing. Creation waits with longing for the revealing of the children of God. But listen to this. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. That to me is this image that reminds us that creation suffers. You see, we have this image that, <coughs> excuse me, when Jesus died on the cross and was raised again, it was for us, and it was for us. But what we neglect to remember is that Jesus redeemed all of creation. Think about this for a moment. Seven days, and we're not gonna argue right now, so seven periods of time, how about if I say that? Seven periods of time that God created. We know what happened on the seventh day. What happened on the seventh day? He rested. Right. On the seventh day, God rested. What happened on the first five? Creation. Birds and fish. Light and dark. The sky. The waters. The, all of creation. And then what came on the sixth day? And we have the assumption that we are more important than six days of, uh, five days of creation. We are not. We are a part of God's creation. And when we don't use creation in the right way, it suffers. We see these things happening over and over again. I don't care where you are with global warming. It doesn't matter. I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, espousing one way or the other, but I am going to tell you this. When we were in Alaska, we saw the Kinnick Glacier. And one of the things that the one guy told us was, at, with, with a heavy heart, he said at one point, the Kinnick Glacier ran from the spot where we were all the way down to Anchorage, which was over an hour away. From there, all the way down to Anchorage was Glacier. At this point today, it's just this little area. You see, creation, 
cries in labor pains because of the decisions we make and because of the choices that we have. Creation is waiting for the revealing of the children of God because children of God will be so changed and so transformed that we will know that creation is a part of all God wants to restore and we will be a part of restoring that. But know this too, it says it groans in labor pains. Well, birth is a dangerous process. Most times it results in life, not all times does it though. But for this purpose, we're going to look at if creation is groaning in labor pains, it's waiting for a new birth. It's waiting for a new birth. And we, as children of God, have the opportunity to be part of that new birth. Being a child of God has a lot of responsibilities to it, but it also means that there are a lot of things that we receive from it as well. And God calls us children of God, not because of who we are, but because of whose we are. I wanna end with a quote from Mother Teresa. May today be peace within. May you trust your highest power that you are exactly where you are meant to be. May you not forget the infinite possibilities that are born of faith. May you use those gifts that you have received and pass on the love that has been given to you. May you be content knowing that you are a child of God. Let this presence settle into your bones and allow your soul the freedom to dance, sing, praise, and love. It is there for each and every one of you.